Hello and welcome. Our today's topic is creating and maintaining competitive advantage. The topics that will be covered is what are competitive, what parameters constitute competitive advantage and how to create and maintain them. We will be briefly talking about Porter's five forces model of competition and also effectuation is another model for selecting business model to gain competitive advantage uh, based on uh, your immediate resources available under your disposal. So, what is competitive advantage? Competitive advantage are the skills necessary to outpace your rivals, meaning you would like to remain ahead of your rivals in terms of acquiring customers, in terms of gaining growth, sustaining business. Most successful companies derive these benefits through technology, meaning IP, uh, through brands, through uh, adopting or restructuring with the rapid changes that happens in the marketplace, customer change, customer test their liking. So, they try to adopt as quickly as possible or maybe they preempt the changes that, uh, that are going to happen in the marketplace and prepare themselves with the change. So, competitors remain followers where, whereas you remain ahead of the competition. So, one thing is that you must have a wonderful product market fit. So, that there is no reason why customer will not buy your product and then customer should fall in love with your brand with the story that you kind of tell them. So, your story should resonate with their aspirations, there is a perfect fit in that. Create unique competencies, we will be talking about core competencies that gives huge uh, capability, capability in manufacturing, capability in, in uh, cost cutting, capability in maintaining customer relations, etcetera, etcetera. So, factors uh, uh, normally regarded as uh, as uh, responsible for competitive advantage or factors that to try to improve to gain competitive advantage. This list is by no means comprehensive, there are many more, but uh, I just picked up some of them which I liked and uh, they are not in any particular chronology or order, but just uh, randomly distributed. First is entry barrier, meaning uh, you are in the business and you want that other mm, other uh, potential or would be entrepreneur should not be find it easy to enter into your marketplace. So, you would kind of try to create an entry barrier against entrance from outside. So, you want to protect your market. Scalability meaning uh, your business should, should scale as quickly as possible because now, we have discussed uh, something called crossing the chasm, meaning that uh, acquiring some customer at the beginning like innovator kind of customer or early adopters may be slightly easy because these are the people who like to experiment with new products. But then moving from early adopters to early majority is a huge uh, difficult phase. So, they call it chasm or turbulent or uh, say twister or something. So, it is very difficult to cross. So, unless you have some model, some uh, some plans to move to the next level, the business will not scale. So, business has to be scalable otherwise the business fall into the value of death, pricing power. Meaning, that you can increase the price without the fear of losing some of the customers. How can you create that? You have to have loyal customers, they will buy your product no matter what, even if they will not mind, even if the price goes up a little bit. So, whenever input cost goes up, you are kind of safe, you can safely pass on the increased price or say increased duty, government taxes or anything to the customer without the fear of losing them core competence, uh, repeatability is very important. Customer should come repeatedly, otherwise uh, you spend a fortune acquiring a customer. Unless they come again and again, it will be difficult for you to recover the acquisition cost and then make profit during the lifetime of a customer. 
core competency is unique capability that is created over the years through strategy, through uh, you know uh, continuous effort and it gives some capability that is not visible, it comes, it, it gets embedded into the system and the system becomes agile, the system becomes very uh, efficient which is not visible. So, nobody can copy that and you gain this advantage which may be your cost advantage, maybe quality advantage, maybe, maybe business process advantage that you create over the years very uh, diligently compelling nature of the pain. If the customer has a compelling pain and they are crying for a solution, obviously you have advantage. Of course, your product must have better efficacy compared to competitors, growth potential, technological edge, ownership of IP, technology and ownership of IP are the same thing, but sometimes you may not have the IP, but uh, still if you have technological edge meaning that your process is better or your product has better efficacy. So, and that may be protected by IP, you have entry barrier created around your business. So, you have advantage, easy product extension. So, you advertise, advertise and then you create a brand and people become loyal to your company, your brand and uh, you can safely put another product uh, under the same brand or uh, under the name of your company and then customers already are loyal to your brand. So, they will buy the new products that you that you uh, try to promote moving forward. So, whatever you are marketing there should be an easy extension like suppose uh, if you are marketing something which is very unique and there is no other product which is very similar to that or related to that then it, it becomes very difficult. Suppose you are selling say, um, say some kind of biscuits. Now, you want to gain uh, new, mar you want to acquire a new market or gain new market segment or something. Now, suppose you introduce an organic variety of biscuits. So, you are already known to the market that you are, you have a wonderful brand and customers trust your uh, quality, your uh, your honesty, integrity, integrity, your ethical standard. So, once you have created that, now you introduce a new product, customer will not hesitate to buy even at a higher price. You tell them that this is organic, organic itself has a, has a value, but then uh, organic by any Tom, Dick, Harry may not be bought by customer, may not be you know, accepted. But if you have a brand presence, particularly in food industry unless you have brand pre you don't have a brand presence and you introduce a new product people will remain apprehensive logistic advantage meaning your if you have a if you are a manufacturing company you are located close to raw material uh, uh, sources or maybe you are within the marketplace where you are you are uh, you are close to the market great brand with loyal followers you have discussed that so entry barrier just uh, talking a little bit about them because we have already discussed time is of the essence so, will not dwell in at length. So, technological is economies of scale and cost advantage thereof. Suppose you are you have a huge manufacturing capability. So, per unit cost is going to be low because your overhead cost will be distributed among many number of units. So, you will have a cost advantage brand loyalty. These are superimposition of some of the points, but that is how you create entry barrier. Geographical barrier meaning that you are present say at particular point where the market is. Uh, now, suppose you are manufacturing cement which is voluminous and transportation is a huge cost. Now, suppose you are present in a particular city. So, another company whose manufacturing unit is elsewhere, they will not be able to market their product in this city where you are present because of the geographic, geographical advantage because you do not have to carry the product to another city maybe say 100 kilometer uh, away. So, uh, this is how geographical barriers can be created by remaining present close to the marketplace. There may be many more. Access to strategic resources like suppose you are manufacturing aluminum, you have access to bauxite mine, this is strategic so, resource. So, you have a natural advantage. If not, then you will be at the mercy of the suppliers and then you lose, means if anybody wants to uh, depend on third party supply then uh, he or she or that business will not have uh, this advantage and you create entry barrier through the license that you uh, gain from the government. Product differentiation meaning if your product you are in the market segment where other companies are there, but you create some kind of 
uh, you introduce some kind of features that that are critical for uh, the customers, uh, a subgroup of the customers, and they would they value that particular feature greatly. So you create product differentiation, uh, targeting this particular audience, and they won't buy another product because that particular feature may not be there. So that is how you create product differentiation and and uh, gain. Uh, competitive advantage create kind of entry barrier. The degree of firm concentration meaning how thickly there are competitors present. So, if there are very thickly present then there is no barrier, but if there are uh, thinly present but then you can create barrier. Capital requirement meaning that if that is that is very very uh, specific to particular business like I mentioned about cement or steel or, or say power plant wherever uh, means these companies are capital intensive meaning that it requires a lot of initial capital. These are sunk cost once invested you cannot you know sell that and re realize that. So, these these kind of businesses uh, because they require huge capital investment new entrant will not usually venture into that uh, because they will not feel comfortable uh, because in case they are not uh, profitable then the entire money is sunk. So, that has some advantage for the existing incumbent. Customer switching cost meaning that suppose you are selling water filter, suppose it is uh, say AquaGuard or some other filter. So, now once you sell the filter then on an annual basis you sell them cartridges. So, they these cartridges are not uh, adaptable to other filters. So, for customer to go to another company is a huge amount of switching cost because the initial money that they have invested is a sunk cost and they cannot recover that by switching to another company unless they give some kind of an uh, exchange model or something. Access to distribution channel uh, like Flipkart, they have eCart. So, it is a natural access you can talk to Indian uh, postal department to create that advantage. Government policy is another one. Uh, if if you, are, you, are, you are in a in an industry where the policy is favorable, etc, uh, etc. Et this is how entry barrier is created. I was talking about entry barrier. Uh, uh, see, it is a kind of a symbolic way of uh, uh, means giving an analogy with real different examples. So, uh, the, the palace that you see in the water at the center of the water body uh, is protected because this water body has maybe crocodile or something. In the night time, they remove the, the pathway or the culvert that that is normally there during daytime. You can see the the image at the top that is during daytime, and the image at the bottom is the night time, and there is no access to this palace. So they create an entry barrier during night so that no enemy can enter inside. If somebody tries to swim, he will be eaten by crocodile. So you consider your business to be this palace, or business means your customers, your market, and you want your market to be protected against new entrant or competitors. Uh, entry by competitors. So, you would like to do anything to create this kind of a barrier and, and uh, protect your market. Scalability we have already discussed, I will not dwell so much. Business has to, you must scale the business. For any entrepreneurship business, unless you are capable of scaling, then business is gone. Uh, like say Amazon, Flipkart, Practo, they, they have scaled. Some of the companies they did not scale and they, they found it very, very difficult to move forward. In particularly in network based companies where uh, network based companies uh, like Amazon Flipkart they are all network based companies scalability is a must and we will discuss that we have a separate slide on that. Market structure next point and this is again very important uh, for uh, not only for creating um, competitive advantage even before entering into any business. You, if you are thinking of exploring a business model to start a business, you must be very careful about market structure. This is mostly, uh, this mostly consists of market size, what the total size of the market, the market size is small and there are competitors, it is very difficult to make money and grow. Uh, the present market growth, if the market is growing fast, fast enough, good and the future growth potential. Whatever is the present growth, market must grow in the future. So, you must have some kind of insight that the market is going to grow because you are a new entrant, you have to capture customer, maybe snatch customer from existing players. So, unless the market is growing, you will find going very difficult. 
the number of firms and number of firms are many definitely it's not it, it's not a good market structure market share of largest firm if the largest firm has something like 70 80% market and the remaining small percentages are shared by many you are going to be a small player in a small segment a small portion of the market it's not good so uh, there should not be many dominant player the succinct message is that demand supply gap there should be more demand than supply uh, the cost structure, if, this, if, the, if it is capital in intensive, your overhead cost is going to be very high. The cost structure is more fixed cost, less variable cost. So, one has to be very careful in, uh, in a capital intensive business where overhead cost is very high. Unless the volume is very high, it is not wise to enter into the business because realizing the fixed cost itself means reaching break even. We will talk about break even in a different, dif uh, different session is going to be very difficult. The degree to which industry is integrated, forward, backward integrated, the industry is highly integrated and you are catering, you are means you are present only in a small part of the value chain starting from raw material, then finally the finished product you are just catering to a small part, it is very difficult to sustain. So, you need to be integrated. So, in means having integration at the beginning itself is going to be very, very difficult. So, that is not a good market structure. The strict extent of product differentiation, if everybody is offering some kind of differentiation in product and if you are not capable of identifying a new niche, a new differentiation in your product, it is going to be very difficult. So, if the products are not very differentiated and if you find that you can come up with a differentiation and that can be unique, some customers will be, uh, will be uh, taking that as a unique value proposition, then it is a good proposition. Customer turnover, how quickly customers are changing over from one brand to another brand or are they too loyal to brand, then it is very difficult. If they are not, they are switching casually, quickly, it is a fine market for new entrant, then you create brand and you know make them loyal to your brand, there will be huge potential. Market types, this is a very brief discussion, a detailed discussion should be, uh, detailed uh, knowledge should be gathered from good economics book. So, I am just giving you only three types of market, there are many other types of market, one is monopolistic, oligopolistic, perfect competition. Monopolistic is almost a single company offering a single product to the entire segment. So, they have huge pricing power because whatever price they command people are going to buy because there is no other competing product. Normally, their products are sim simple and pricing power is very high, entry barrier also is very high because they have they must have uh, acquired or developed a new technology, new product that others were not capable of that is why perhaps they have this monopoly or they have access to uh, strategic uh, resources like mine or something else that that prevents others from you know uh, coming in entering into the market oligopolistic there are uh, some small number of companies and uh, every company is offering something like a differentiated product or maybe sim similar product differentiation is not so important and the barrier to entry is high because these oligopolists who are small in number, but they are always uh, in, in syndicate, syndicate, syndicate or they collude among themselves like they create group means they themselves are group, they work in group and whenever they intend to increase the price, they will uh, consult each other and increase the price this is not uh, legally tenable means government comes heavily, uh, this is not uh, good for customer consumers that is why it is not allowable permissible that any comp any any different companies colluding among themselves and increasing the price. So, uh, oligopolist likes a cement. So, there are few cement companies, there are micro cement companies bearing from them, there are uh, few cement major companies with a country wide uh, logistic or distribution network supply chain. So, if they want to increase the price, perhaps they can discuss among themselves and increase. So, uh, they kind of have huge pricing power. Perfect competition is where there are a lot of companies and there is no dif product differentiation, everybody sells uh, uh, almost uh, similar product. So, there is not much of uh, switching cost for the customer. Out of this three monopolistic uh, companies they are price giver, meaning that they dictate the price. 
oligopolist also dictate the price. Whereas, perfect competition market here the the businesses cannot dictate price. If somebody increases the price, the others they he he or this company will lose market, meaning customers will switch to some other product. So that this for perfect competition that is the problem and margin also is very low meaning profit is less whereas monopolist they have huge profit because they always have pricing power pricing power is the capacity to increase price without affecting level of customers demand for the product to discuss that so the ability to raise prices is some of the most important characters because whenever market situation is not so good meaning input costs are high you can pass it over to the customer and maintain your profit so, so your business becomes sustainable so that is why pricing power is something that every company looks toward here is a, is a wonderful and interesting example of pricing power. See, there was a drug called Daraprim. It was introduced in US and it was a life saving drug uh, and it, they were selling at 13.5 dollar a capsule. Then some guy suddenly realized that because these capsules are life saving and there is no competitor in the marketplace, he took over this company and next day he priced it at 750 dollar a capsule. And no customer he did not lose any customer because this is a life saving drug and customers have to buy this this came in the new york times so there is no no uh, cook up or no manufacturing of this news this is a news item so overnight one patient's total expenses for treatment went to hundreds of thousands of dollars is a huge increase but then customer had no choice but to buy them but remember this is not neither this is ethical of course, uh, in US there is no bar how you can increase the price, but this is not tenable, not sustainable in the long run. If there is a super profit potential for anything for any business, in no time there will be too many competitors coming in, whatever is the technology. No technology is so difficult that it cannot be copied or uh, reinvented by somebody. So, somebody will come up. Look at this in July 2000, that was in 2015. In July, a copycat already FDA was trying to approve or is in the process of approving a copycat which will be sold at 1 dollar. In India that drug is available for 4 cents only. In Australia school children came up with, an, with, a, with a new molecule that will cost something like a dollar. So, that is what uh, one should be very careful about pricing power and increasing the price uh, really too, too much. Repeatability. Meaning, customers should come repeatedly, you, you incur huge cost in customer acquisition. Unless customers are coming repeatedly, then repeatedly, then it is very difficult to recover that. How to do that? There has to be possibility of product extension. It has to be a business where you offer so many variety of products that customer will ha always have something to pick up. So, once they become a customer, you try to communicate them that I have this, 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 this products. So, they will keep on clicking somewhere or the other during, during their birthday, during uh, new years, during many, many other occasions, they are going to come back and uh, buy from you. Eventually, you recover customer acquisition cost and eventually you make profit. Core competency is one of the most important competency. It was, it, it was uh, you know, um, in the far it was first introduced by C.K. Prahlad and G Gary Hamel. C.K. Prahlad happened to be an Indian, but he was a professor in University of Michigan. He was, now he is no more. The core company and he was a management guru of his, guru of his time. He was regarded as, as among the best management gurus. They came up with the idea of core competency. I think it, was, it came, came in 1995 uh, in, a, in a publication. I do not remember the journal name. So, core competency I think it came out, came out in uh, Harvard Business Review perhaps. So, core competency how Prahlad explained is an area of a specialized expertise that is the result of harmonizing complex streams of technology and work activity. Meaning that you harmonize many, many capabilities like how you handle your people, how you uh, motivate them to be creative, how you make everything efficient, how everybody becomes quality conscious. So, everything together you gain some kind of capability that is a sum total of all the capabilities, all the efforts, all the strategy, all, all efficiencies together gives you a unique capability that, call, that is called core competency and it is not visible because it is a combination of so many things and you do it 
not in a in a formula there is no formula written somewhere so out from outside no competitors will be able to uh, understand as to what gave you these advantages so they won't be able to copy that is the succinct uh, message of uh, uh, explanation about core competency but it's huge and it's uh, it's a wonderful thing to have so any company having core competency they always enjoy good uh, competitive advantage easy product extension because you create a brand spending so uh, fortune so if you have another product like you piggyback piggyback means you have one product then put another product behind it meaning the first product actually the the pool the loyalty that is enjoyed by the first product will will be ca will carry the next product and the next product and the next so you keep on introducing new product as your product reach to the saturation stage you keep on introducing new product and uh, you have uh, means you you continue to enjoy the market introduce new products targeting the same segment natural extension of logistic advantage meaning it is the locational advantage either close to the nearness to the customer nearness to the uh, raw material etc etc strong brand presence we we discussed about brands brand a huge uh, for a long long time in my earlier uh, presentations so we will not dwell so much but still brand actually connects customer emotionally with your your company your product and then uh, they become loyal means they they kind of become emotionally attached and uh, you continue to enjoy their loyalty and they keep on buying your product so uh, you, you should you should you should you must have a story uh, which uh, which will resonate with customers aspiration their emotion their sense of value and then you create a wonderful bond like uh, i gave an example of huggies uh, huggies actually to, told this story about skin to skin uh, contact and the enormous advantage of that to the babies like the baby become create some you know means uh, unique uh, immunity their their vitals improves uh, they create bond with their parents etc etc how and huggies the name actually starts with hugs so everything together they told a story and mothers became loyal to the brand some some more points like cost leadership strategy if you if you have a huge skill for production then you enjoy cost advantage then product differentiation uh, we have discussed that operational effectiveness like business process management so uh, meaning that you do whatever you do the best that of course comes in effectuation as well adaptability to competitive advantage meaning that uh, market is changing technology is changing customers test is changing you adopt yourself so the quickly you can adopt that is also a capability so you remain competitive the information advantage it, today is the world means this is the world of uh, information so you gather data you analyze the data to understand customer preferences and how the preferences is changing so you refine your product or service and uh, continue to uh, continue that roma customer romance with your your product or service and you remain competitive portus five forces analysis this is a kind of an understanding about the competitive landscape of the entire marketplace we have uh, this fonts are small so i'll just give a pause here and move to the next slide where i have larger fonts this is just putting everything together so this is the uh, content just copy pasted so competitive so we have a horizontal forces three horizontal forces two vertical forces horizontal forces the middle one is the competitive rivalry meaning you are in a marketplace and you have competitors existing competitors so depending on their strengths and weaknesses your strengths and weaknesses you will define competitive your competitive advantage threat of substitution suppose you are producing something and selling market is going well but suppose that there is an a substitute product so somebody comes up with that substitute product so customer may switch to that depending on uh, if it is a is a is a wonderful replacement of your product meaning if there is a cost advantage or the better efficacy customer will switch so threat of substitution threat of new entrant see today is the age of entrepreneurship startups so every startup will come up with new technology so every exist means every uh, uh, existing companies are 
always under tension that new companies will come up with new technology, technology is changing so fast. So, one the major threat comes from new entrants. So, these are the uh, uh, horizontal three competitive forces. The vertical forces is buyer power, supplier power. There are many buyers. Uh, if there are many buyers, then uh, uh, then you have unique power. But if there are less buyer, more sellers, then you are in a buyer's market. It's called a buyer's market, meaning that buyers are dictating the terms. So you becomes you become price takers. They dictate the price. They will say, "I won't buy unless the price is this." So if there are many buyers. Does it cost them much to switch to new seller? If they, if it doesn't cost to switch, they will switch to some other, some other place. If they can dictate terms, you may have to price price very competitively. That will reduce your your uh, margin. Suppliers' power. If there are many suppliers, you have the choice to buy from any and dictate price. But if there are fewer, if there are uh, fewer suppliers, they they have the option to either supply to you or your competitors. So, they will dictate the price. This is slightly, this slide should have been slightly uh, earlier uh, during network uh, talking about network effect. It is important to understand that at present we are in the demand side economy. The flip side is the supply side economy obviously. Demand side economy is where driving force the business is economies of a scale. This is a known as network effect meaning that suppose you have flip cut. So, if you can increase your uh, sales, if you can increase the variety of product, then you can attract more and more customer and if there are more and more customer, you can distribute them, you can have a distribution network which will be um, more cost effective because you can supply a uh, large number of product across the, across the country. Otherwise, suppose you are sub selling only few products and your customers are spread all across the country, so distribution becomes difficult. At the same time, if you are selling too many products, then you can command a better price from your suppliers. So, you are always going to enjoy benefit uh, in a, in a uh, situation where you are growing rapidly. So, that is what is network effect. Firms that have large customer base can afford higher variety of goods and enjoy this benefit. And, uh, these companies can give higher satisfaction to customer because they give variety of product and because they buy in bulk. So, their cost of uh, acquiring the goods are lower compared to others and they can sell at a lower price. They can easily grow customer base. Supply side economy is again the competitive advantage or the advantage is derived by putting up huge scale of production. If you are manufacturing in huge number, so your cost of production per unit goes down and then uh, you can entice your customer to buy more. So, you offer at a lower price, customers buy more, you gain market access, but this is not today's business. But of course, uh, today's business is a combination of means many companies are very smartly combining the two and gaining advantage. So, let us move forward. We have already discussed this example uh, will be uh, this will drive from the point in a, in a in a better way see amazon has two models one is 1p model another is 3p model 1p means first party wherein amazon will acquire or procure all the goods uh, from the vendors they will buy the uh, goods and um, uh, keep that in their own warehouse from where they will sell it in the same brand so customers will sell it to amazon title of the goods goes to transfer to Amazon, then Amazon sells whenever they like at whatever price they like. There is no real, no influence of the vendor who supplied these goods. So, here vendor has limited pricing power because if the, there is a huge demand by customers, vendors are not benefited, Amazon is benefited. At the same time, Amazon can sell product at a lower price because they have procured the price at, a, uh, at some negotiated price uh, link, they have procured the goods at some negotiated price and they can now sell it at a at a margin whatever. Alternately, uh, Amazon has another model that is called peer to peer market model where Amazon uh, pro offer the uh, earlier one is the Amazon e-commerce site. This next one is peer to peer marketplace, meaning here you can post your product uh, by yourselves. 
Amazon allows you to post your product in Amazon e-marketplace and then customer will click on your product and buy and uh, that the price at which customer purchase, customers purchase is dictated by you, you offer the price, Amazon does not offer the price. So, if you see that demand is more, you can increase the price, demand is less, you can reduce the price and sell more. Now, there are uh, two, three models on this list, uh, this e peer to peer marketplace. Amazon uh, may, uh, may do the packaging and forwarding and distribution that is called uh, Amazon fulfilled or Amazon delivered. Uh, uh, there may be another option where Amazon will not do anything, they just offer this platform. You have to get the orders and then supply it to the customer directly. So, there are, there are uh, kind of different thing. The network model uh, has this advantage and this threat. One is you are selling to customers, then you gather customer data and you, you understand, you, you learn from customer data, learn what customers are actually liking and disliking. Accordingly, you refine your product, then you give better satisfaction with new product to the customers. Now, they are happier. So, you get more customer, get more sales, it keeps on uh, growing the marketplace and that is how it sustains this model. Effectuation, I will just uh, discuss briefly, we are running, we have already run out of time. Effectuation, uh, the model has been uh, introduced by Saras Saraswati is an Indian, but settlements is, is an entrepreneur, is a uh, cognitive scientist, he studied several expert entrepreneurs to understand how entrepreneurs decide about business model. And she realized that entrepreneurs uh, decide, most successful entrepreneurs decide about business model from the fact of their own strength and weaknesses rather than you know what business is doing good or bad. Uh, so, the core philosophy is that entrepreneurs try to learn what do they do best, number one who are they meaning what is their qualification, what is their technical knowledge and what is their experience, what can they can do well better than other people. Then whom they know meaning their network of people or enterprises where they can bank on at the time of necessity and then what resources they control, money, uh, strategic resources like uh, anything like mines or anything, a process referred to as effectuation is a process of thinking that helps entrepreneurs to identify and assess opportunity for new venture creation. It is a decision making principle for identifying business opportunities. Expert entrepreneurs, the same thing who I know, whom, uh, what I know, etcetera, they are mindful of the affordable extent of loss. This is another important point I missed that uh, they, they try to estimate what is the potential loss, whether this lot is loss is affordable. If the loss is huge, they will not venture into that business. So, they appreciate surprises meaning that they know that there will be positive and negative. If business goes in the negative direction, they are ready to face that and they will redefine, they will pivot or something, but they will not you know crash under the burden. They make partnership with people of complementary skill, meaning that if they know something, they do not, do not know something, they will try to partner with some people, means their co-founder that who know, who can fill this knowledge gap or skill gap. They believe that future is neither found nor predicted, but rather made. They make their future, their destiny is created by them, that is what their trust is. Some references and uh, some final words. So, thank you.